Hi, so I've seen how another YouTuber called NerdRage has used some sodium hydroxide and magnesium turnings and reacted them under some mineral oil, which I have here, to make some sodium metal. And this kind of seems too good to be true for me, so I definitely want to try the synthesis. And if I'm able to reproduce it, I want to try to improve it and then scale it up to see if I can actually use this to make lots of sodium metal. As a reaction vessel I'll be using this 3 necked round bottom flask which has a volume of 250 milliliters. So let's start by charging the reagents. First we're going to start with 14 grams of magnesium metal. To this we'll be adding 20 grams of sodium hydroxide. Then we need 1.5 grams of menthol crystals which smell absolutely amazing. As a solvent we'll use 125 milliliters of mineral oil. Also we shouldn't forget to add a stir bar. And last but not least we need 3 grams of sodium metal to jumpstart the reaction. And now I have to assemble the apparatus. Okay, there we go. So here we have a thermometer which reaches and here into the liquid. I hope this rubber stopper is somewhat tight, but we'll have to see with that. Then we have here a gas outlet which leads into this bubbler filled with mineral oil so we can see the evolution of hydrogen. And this is just stopped off because we don't need the third neck. I think to start stirring is a good idea. Okay, it looks like this works. And now we turn up the heat until we reach an internal temperature of 130 degrees Celsius. In order to make this a bit more efficient, we we'll add some aluminum foil. You can see that it's heating up and that our apparatus is tight because it's starting to bubble here already. We have now reached an inside temperature of 120 degrees Celsius and as you can see the mixture has started to bubble a lot. A good sign, so we're it's doing something at least. Probably the sodium is first of all reacting with the leftover water and the sodium hydroxide to produce more sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Turned off the heat now, but the temperature keeps rising, so that's not a big surprise because the reaction is exothermic. Just a little afraid it might bubble over. <laughs> After about one hour, the evolution of hydrogen is so slow that we are getting a bubble less than every 10 seconds. So according to the instructions from NerdRage, we now should be able to turn up the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius inside the reaction vessel and that should start the production of sodium metal. I have overheated this a little bit. We are now at 240 degrees, so I hope that's not a big deal. Looks like it's boiling. I mean, maybe maybe that caused some of the mantle to boil off. So we might have to add some more. But I can't smell it in the bubbler. This is now about three hours later. The temperature is now 210 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, we have formed lots of spheres, little spheres of sodium, which is good. But it's a bit problematic that I was having trouble with the stirring all the time and it looks like it hasn't stirred properly. Yeah, the stir bar seems to be stuck, so... Let me just try to help that a little bit. Ooh, that's hot. Whoa, the oil is smoking hot. Hmm, the stir bar is refusing to work. Alright, to help myself with that, I will insert an external stirrer. Okay, let's try to run this now. What happens if I turn it on? Doesn't stir, of course. Amazing! And now the bubbler is bubbling nicely again. The reaction has been going overnight now, the stirring worked perfectly fine. And the bubbling has basically come to a stop. I mean, I am still getting bubbles, but only very rarely. So I want to take a look inside the reaction flask to get a better idea of how far the reaction is. Well, as you can see, you can't see anything, basically. So I have no idea. 
I'm afraid a little bit too much of the menthol evaporated. I was adding the stirrer, so I will add an extra 0.6 grams and see if that helps to speed up the reaction again. Oh my god, when I added this the bubbler started going a little bit crazy. So let's see if that was actually the case. This seems to have to increase the rate of bubbling, so maybe indeed too much menthol has evaporated. The reaction has been running for around about 40 hours now. And as you can see in the bubbler we are having a suck back. And according to the instructions that I'm following this means that the reaction is done. So we'll turn off the heat now. And the stirring stopped working again. Um, I hope that's not a problem. The reaction mixture has now cooled down to 20 degrees Celsius. So now let's see if this entire thing was a success or a failure. Okay, so the stir thingy is taking some damage apparently. <laughs> that's not idea. Okay, moment of truth. Let's pour this off and see if we got any sodium metal. Okay, so far I can't see anything that looks particularly promising. So this definitely doesn't look like in the video I so. saw. But it looks like we might have some sodium spheres. Okay, so it looks like this is sodium metal right here in the sieve. So yeah, we get some sodium, but I'm not sure if it's more than this recram that we additionally that we added in the first run. Oh, we might have gotten a bunch more, but it's in two small spheres, so it's not getting caught. Yeah, if I look inside of the flask, I can see lots of little spheres. And I assume we have the same down in the speaker. Okay, before I try to work up this giant royal mess, I'll try to secure what I've collected so far. So let me transfer this into the test tube. And let's add some of this leftover mineral oil. And now let's try to melt all this together. Wow! Some sodium must have been stuck on the outside. Was scary. Okay, it looks like this is working at least. Okay, the sodium has cooled down and I've uh, filtered it off again. And it looks like we've improved the situation. Now let's try to weigh this first result. Okay, so it's basically the sodium that we started with back. Well, well, well. So let's say we get a yield of 0%. I guess I just have to try this again. I mean, I didn't lose anything valuable. I mean, even the sodium isn't really that valuable. So that's all the paraffin oil with the residues from the first reaction. And I'm guessing there's still a lot of sodium in there. But before I try to isolate that, I will just make a second attempt. This time I will do the reaction on a larger scale, but with less solvent, so I can still do it in this flask. So we'll start out with 28 grams of magnesium filings. To that I will add 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. To this I'll add 3.6 gram of absolutely amazing smelling menthol. Also we'll add 140 milliliters of mineral oil. And last but not least 6.4 grams of sodium metal to jumpstart the reaction. The apparatus is set up, so let's try to turn on the stirring. It's looking great. And now let's slowly turn up the heat. I've overshot the temperature again and now I'm at 250 degrees Celsius and the bubbler is going completely crazy. Let's hope that's not a problem, but I guess it shouldn't be. Okay, so six hours later the reaction appears to be already done, so we are getting a slight suck back in the bubbler already. I'm really hoping that this is because I've used less solvent, which increased the concentration and therefore the reaction speed. 
and not that we have another problem but I just let it run overnight and then we'll see so we are about 19 hours and 20 minutes into the synthesis and as you can see the bubbler is going again but very slowly apparently the temperature was just too low earlier it's really hard to uh, set the temperature to exactly 200 degrees with this setup we are pretty much at exactly 27 hours reaction time now and I've seen that the bubbler is starting to backflow which is indicating that the reaction is done we are at 210 degrees inside the reaction mixture so I doubt that it's too cold for the reaction to continue so I will turn off the heat right now stop the stirring ok I just had a stupid camera failure while dismantling the apparatus so yeah the oil was cooled down to 40 degrees celsius now I wanted to check if we got any sodium this entire thing still smells like menthol which is amazing this is what the flask looks like after the reaction as you can see you can't really see anything grey sludge let's pull this off oh my gosh looks like the sodium didn't coalesce again what am I doing wrong? let's try to help this along a little bit so that's the stuff that's not going through the sieve might be sodium but it's definitely not coalesced enough for me to tell properly and other than that I am not sure this is definitely not looking like it's supposed to before I try to work this up any further take a drop of that that went through the sieve and see if it fizzes if I drop it in some ethanol oh yeah it definitely does yeah so there is a lot of sodium in there it's just finely divided which is bad probably have to filter this off somehow and then try to boil it in dioxane alright I've got my filtering set up ready ok let's turn on the pump and hope nothing explodes and pour in our liquid this might take a while ok the filtration is taking ages but if it would be different I would be surprised and I will now transfer everything that we've sifted off into the small round button flask so I can try the sodium dioxide separation with this I hope I filtered off enough of the mineral oil now so I will now try to transfer everything into this flask and now I'm now I will add some of this carcinogenic dioxane dioxane or whatever you can hear it fizzing that's bad means the dioxane contains water let's hope it's not too impure this is fizzing horribly uh oh ok let's fill it up to the 200 milliliter mark oh my god this is foaming like crazy I'm afraid I just destroyed everything didn't know the Dioxane was so incredibly wet. Anyway, I will just try to wipe this clean and then I will try to reflux it. Maybe we might still be getting some sodium. If not, at least we tried. Okay, I'm just trying to distill off the dioxane right now and even if we don't get anything, at least we should have some dry dioxane at the end. Okay, this is the aftermath from the distillation, so this should be our now hopefully dry dioxane. And well, this is just a brown or grey sludge that's left on the other side. Highly doubt there's any usable quantity of sodium in there. Well, maybe I would have to reflux it for longer, but I don't have the time for it. So now we are getting to our very last resort, and that's the stuff we made from the first batch, and that's the stuff that we sift off. So this should still contain a lot of sodium. This should at least contain 5 to 10 grams, and this is maybe two or three more grams it should be enough for 
dioxane separation with this dioxane if we reflex it for a while. So let's first of all make double sure that this dioxane is dry. So to make sure that the dioxane is dry, I have here, let's take one of the bigger beads from the very first run and wipe off all of the mineral oil. And now let's drop the speed into the dioxane. Let's see if it survives. It swims. And is it bubbling? Can't see it from here. This is looking good. So yeah, the sodium is swimming on the dioxane. But there's no reaction taking place. So, you can now take a fresh flask and transfer everything in there and then reflex it until we get some nice big pieces of sodium. Dioxane actually smells quite nice but if you know it's the smell of death or cancer you don't like it so much. Stupid psychology always ruins everything or maybe saves my life in this case. Something swimming on the surface. Is that sodium already? Could be that the larger beads of sodium are already swimming up. It's interesting. Okay, and now boil this and pray to God we get like a decent amount of sodium out of this. This has been reflexing like this for more than half an hour and I'm not seeing anything. Maybe some sodium has collected under the surface and I can't see it. So we'll turn off the heat and if it cools down it should float up but we'll have to see with that. Well at least there seems to be some sodium collected on the surface <laughs> but not nearly as much as I would expect or like. So we have actually collected quite a lot of sodium on the surface but it's not coalesced so apparently this method just needs to boil for a long time. So we'll turn the heat back on and we'll see, maybe we'll get some nice lumps of sodium. This has been reflexing now for a couple of hours. So let's turn it off and hope we get something of use. The silver blob there in the middle looks a lot more like what I would like to see. So this is looking promising actually for the first time. <laughs> Here's what this looks like after cooling down and it looks like we might have a huge chunk of sodium there so let's pour it out now. Looks like it might also be just a collection of lots of tiny droplets. Oh well, moment of truth now. Oh my god. No! It was just a collection of lots of tiny droplets. I will definitely have to seek some help now because I don't really have a clue what I'm doing wrong and maybe someone can tell me. So if you are watching this and you have any idea where I messed up I would be very thankful for any suggestions. Other than that, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed even though I didn't exactly achieve what I wanted but I will get there one day, one way or another. So until next time, bye bye.